Perhaps one of the most central motifs of our Parsha is the section known as Parsha Tamwadim, the section that details the various festivals that are observed throughout the year. And Hashem commands Moshe, Daber al b'nei Yisrael ve'amarta lehem, speak to the Jewish people and say to them, Mo'adei Hashem asher tikru otam mikra'i kodesh ilahim mo'adai, that the festivals of the Lord, which you shall observe as sacred occasions, these are my mo'adim, these are my festivals. And what perhaps is most interesting is that instead of listing the holidays the way that we might have expected, the Torah continues and interrupts this thought to teach us the laws of Shabbat. For six days we should work on the seventh. It should be a Shabbat, a day of rest. It should be a Mikra Kodesh. It should be a sacred occasion. And in that sense, it's interesting, if not strange, that the list of these quote-unquote sacred occasions, that it begins with Shabbat. Instead of discussing the moments that are holy like Pesach, the holidays of Shavuos, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot, the Torah makes mention of Shabbat as the very first of these Mikra'e Kodesh, of these sacred occasions. And what I think we can see from the Torah's presentation of these sacred moments is that Shabbat itself is included under the category of the Moadim, the category of the holy and sacred festivals. And while we tend to distinguish between Shabbat and Yom Tov, the Torah here explicitly classifies them together under the same category of Mikra'e Kodesh, of sacred occasions. And so I think the question that begs asking is what then is the relationship between the two? What is the relationship between Shabbat and Yom Tov? In what way is Shabbat considered a moed? And so Rav Salvechik famously described Shabbat and Yom Tov as two different manifestations of what we would call Gilu Shechina, human beings encounter with the Divine Presence. You see, both Shabbat and Yom Tov, the holidays, they are just characterized by this encounter itself. In fact, the word moed, in which we usually translate to mean holiday, likely comes from the Hebrew word for meeting, as in ohel moed, the tent of meeting. And while they both are considered a moed, these encounters are experienced differently on Shabbat and on Yom Tov. On the holidays, the Jewish people, we visit Hashem, so to speak, in the Beit HaMikdash. Every individual brings their own personal sacrifices, no different than the way a guest might bring a gift to their host. And in that sense, Yom Tov is an occasion for quote-unquote visiting God and rejoicing in His presence. But think about Shabbat, on the other hand. It's Shabbat when Hashem actually comes and visits our homes, as it were. As we say in Lechadodi, we say, Bowie Kala, Bowie Kala, we greet the Divine Presence with the fervor and the enthusiasm of a groom greeting his bride and bringing her into his home. And halacha requires that we prepare our home and also ourselves before Shabbat as though preparing for a most distinguished guest. We make our homes clean and orderly, we light candles, we prepare special foods, we bathe and put on our finest clothes for Shabbat because we prepare for the special guest. We prepare for the Shechina that enters our home and remains with us throughout Shabbat. On Yom Tov, the focal point is the Beit HaMikdash and the sacrifices that we offer to Hashem. And even though today, in the absence of the temple, our Yom Tov preparation and observance very much resembles that of Shabbat, in the times of the temple, these were very different experiences. Shabbat focused on the home, where we host the Almighty, whereas the observance of Yom Tov revolved around the Beit HaMikdash, we go to visit Hashem. In fact, we can see this distinction even today in the liturgy that we daven for Musa for Yom Tov and Musa for Shabbat, respectively. In the Musaf prayers for the holidays, we go on and on about our inability to offer the sacrifices. And we continue, But because of our sins, we've been exiled from our land and distanced from our territories, and we're unable to go and to be seen and bow before Hashem and before our, our obligations in the house that Hashem chose. And as joyous as our Yom Tov celebration is, it's fundamentally deficient in the absence of the temple. The experience of the Beit HaMikdash, it lies at the very heart of the Yom Tov observance, and we therefore sense its absence very profoundly on Yom Tov, prompting us to pray for its restoration. But the observance of Shabbat, however, is not affected in the same way by the absence of the Mikdash. On Shabbat, our focus is on our homes rather than than the temple. 
and we can therefore observe this day fully even after the temple's destruction. In the Shabbos Musaf prayer, while we do pray for the temple's restoration, this prayer is far much shorter, less mournful than the prayer that we say on Yom Tov. We ask that we once again be granted the privilege of offering the Shabbat Musaf offering. We don't elaborate on any anguish over the temple's loss, because the essence of the Shabbat observance it's not affected by the absence of the temple. It doesn't receive the same emphasis on sh in the Shabbat prayers the way that it does in the Yom Tov Musaf. And I think in a broader sense, the observances of Shabbat and Yom Tov perhaps also reflect on two different aspects of Avodat Hashem in general. On Shabbat, we don't leave our homes to experience the Shechina. Shabbat represents the possibility of bringing Hashem into every part of our lives, of infusing any aspect of life with sanctity and with meaning. Avodat Hashem on Shabbat encompasses all of a person's existence. It affects every single moment of the day. There's no point where a person is free from his or her obligations as a servant to Hashem. But on Yom Tov, however, it requires that we make a pilgrimage to the Beit HaMikdash to experience Hashem's presence, to experience the Shechina. And this demonstrates that it's not enough to bring God into our day-to-day -day life. We must occasionally take time off from our ordinary routine to go out and to experience Kedusha, to experience holiness, the possibility, or rather, the obligation of bringing Hashem into our homes, into our day-to-day -day affairs. It doesn't exempt us from taking time away from those activities to go out and to, quote-unquote, visit God. Yes, we need to bring Hashem into our homes, into our workplaces, but we must also occasionally leave our normal surroundings in order to experience the Shechina. And as our society, as well as the opportunities to not only welcome Hashem into our homes, but to also to visit Hashem and seek out new moments of holiness, as all that continues to open up in a more safe way for all of us in our community and our country, I think now more than ever, we need to be even more conscientious of our actions and to work even harder to seek out these moadim, these holy and divine encounters with Hashem, not only on the holidays themselves, but each and every day. Where Shabbat comes along each and every week, and Yom Tov comes about just a handful of times a year, the moadim, the divine encounters with Hashem, they're actually around us each and every day, and all we have to do is look. Shabbat Shalom.